Loss comes in many forms, and usually in unexpected ways. It can be devastating, leaving you facing an uphill struggle to go on with life without someone you thought would always be there. But life does go on, and even in the deepest despair, we can find hope. Welcome to Grief Relief with your hosts, Drs. Gloria and Heidi Horsley, brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, helping people find hope after loss. And now here's Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi. Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley with my co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, today we've got a really special show for you because it's something very dear to my heart, and it's a show that we haven't done yet, and it is on pet loss. Gee, I remember when I was uh, 12 years old, my dog was hit by a car, and I remember that as being one of the more traumatic things that happened in my young life. And so we've got a friend. Do you want to talk about our friend who we're dedicating the show to today? Yes, I would. Our friend is Dr. Wendy Pacman, and her dog, Tartin, died yesterday, and she was 11 and a half years old, and we want to dedicate the show today on pet loss to Tartine. And uh, speaking of Wendy Pacman, one of our guests today is Betty Carmack, and Betty does research with Wendy, and I know uh, another friend of yours that we've had on the show does research with Wendy also, right? Yes, Dr. Corey Vassilari, who is a very good friend of mine. So she and Dr. Betty Carmack are doing research together on pet loss, and it's such an important topic, Mom, and something that we haven't really covered before, but is so near and dear to people's heart. Absolutely. And we've got another expert who's going to be on with us, who is Bonnie Goodman, and she is a thanatologist and a grief counselor, and she works with many clients uh, without pet loss, but also with pet loss. Mm -hmm. And she's got some wonderful information that she'll be giving us, and also uh, Betty Carmack. And then we've got some great music that we'll be going out of the show with, uh, with Peter Anderson and Randy Cookson. So that's a real treat. So let's get started with this topic today, Heidi. Okay, very good. All right. And we want to welcome you to the show today. Bonnie. Thank you so Hi, much. Hi, Bonnie. Hi. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you on. And our friend. Our friend. This is Brittany. We call her Britt. Hi, Britt. Britt. Thanks Hi, for Brittany. being on the show. Hey, Brittany. <laughs> Pets are so important, aren't they? They are. In fact, uh, Brittany comes to work with me every day. She's my service dog, and she's a very healing force with my grieving clients. So talk to us about your work with people who've had pet loss. And, and what, uh, you know, a friend of mine's uh, dog just got hit by a car, mm -hmm. and I was talking to her two weeks ago, and she said, um, I was, I'm not really an animal person, but my dog was killed. I was there. I saw it killed. And uh, I cried for two days. She mm -hmm. said, and the thing that got me was, because I'm a pet lover and I've had animals die and know the, the heart of it, but she said it surprised me because um, I, I, I was so surprised that I was so taken Emotional. by it. Uh -huh. Do you mm -hmm. find that when people come in? Yes. Well, the kind of people who might seek out um, individual grief counseling for pet loss uh, would be the kind of people who are, uh, we call it, uniquely or uh, very deeply connected with their animals. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what people don't always understand, especially non-pet owners, is that the bond and connection with the pet can be just as significant as with a human. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the loss can be just as significant as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got some points about relationships with our pets. Uh, let's start with that and, and talk a little bit about these relationships. I think, um, relation what about relationships with our pets? Well, they can be uh, really extraordinary. Uh, our pets are, as some call them, our secret <coughs> souls. You'll hear people call mm. them their soulmates. Uh, it's, it's a relationship none like any other. Mm -hmm. Our pets are, uh, uh, there's a purity that we have in our lives, w both with ourselves, and it sometimes only comes out with our pets. Mm -hmm. It's the most uncomplicated relationship we could have with any being. Uh, many people will share secrets with their pets that they're unable to share with others mm -hmm. as well. There aren't resentment, resentments with, with pets. There's such a magnificent reciprocity, and um, that's why losing them can be so wow. difficult for well, people. Well, the thing about pets, which is interesting, is I have a friend that just lost her child. Mm -hmm. And their dog has been amazing grief support. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
-hmm. They, you know, the dog will know when they need to be loved and hugged and licked and kissed and yeah. just, it's incredible. They give so much unconditional love. They do. And they're intuitive. Mm -hmm. So the dog you're mentioning is really tuning into the level of stress and grief in that house. And mm -hmm. so if we lose them, it, it's really painful. We'll talk a little bit about bonding styles. I know you talk about that. Yeah. Well, you were mentioning your friend, for example, who... Uh, was surprised by the level of her grief. Mm -hmm. And she reminds me, you said she cried for two days. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she reminds me, uh, if we have to put them in categories, uh, uh, she reminds me of the category that we call um, conventionally bonded. Mm -hmm. And the majority of pet owners will bond with pets in this way, and that is they are, are very good pet parents. They, they'll take good care of them. Um, they uh, don't give them the same status that they do the rest of the family, but they will absolutely take them to regular appointments. Uh, they may stay home more than go on trips with the families. Uh, when the pet dies, though, it's not a big loss for them. Mm -hmm. They will recover from that loss very quickly. So your friend had that very intense grief, and if she wasn't that bonded with her dog, uh, that grief may not last for more than, let's say, a week or so. Mm -hmm. I'm just roughly saying right. that. So that's one style. Uh, another style is called uh, people who are intensely bonded. And the intensely bonded people are uh, exquisite pet owners in terms of their relationship. They will grieve for a very, very long time. Uh, they will have them be part of the family so the status can be exactly the same. They may even uh, call them their brothers, their sisters. They might even anthropomorphize them, which is attributing human traits onto mm -hmm. animals. They're the ones that we see in the strollers. In the strollers, <laughs> dressed up. In, in you, see, you see a lot of them in New York City, I'm telling you. Do you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, so it's a long, difficult grief because the love is very, very deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third style, uh, and we can all use different names. I'm using Dr. Lerner's names, mm -hmm. and, um, and those are up on the slide. And the third style is called um, intimately, uniquely bonded. Mm -hmm. And these people do not cover, recover very easily mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the people who I had a client who could not get out of bed, a man who lost his dog. He could not get out of bed for over a month. Mm -hmm. He was absolutely beside himself. Mm -hmm. You'll see some people in this category who have some suicide ideation. Wow, really that strong. Yes. Mm. These are the people who will seek out uh, pet grief counseling, whether it's with an individual. Hopefully they will. Hopefully they will, or in a group setting. Yeah. Well, and I yes. think it's important to find therapist if you need one that really understands pet loss yes because I would think this could be very minimized exactly mm -hmm. and people would say wait a minute it was only a dog or it was only a cat I don't understand why you're feeling this way yes right. so that bring go ahead uh, go ahead I was just gonna say and talk a little bit about disenfranchised grief yes I was gonna say what Heidi mm, just said okay. is a good segue into yeah that. I was mm -hmm. thinking that you might be going into that with yeah that. so that uh, disenfranchised grief it, what it means is society as a whole does not sanction or value uh, the loss of a pet uh, in the way we do with humans. Mm -hmm. Imagine somebody um, after the loss of a, of a human uh, not being able to take um, leave from their job. Mm -hmm. Well, th there's not any pet loss leave. Uh, some people think it's, uh, that it's... Um, it's a silly thing. So the griever themselves feel shame. They feel uh, dishonored, misunderstood. And what can happen is the grief can get quite stuck. Mm. And uh, that can become a big problem. So as a, as a pet grief counselor, what I'll do is really normalize the grief mm -hmm. and help them develop the language that they need to talk with their of uh, the people in their lives who are judging or not understanding. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, listen, uh, let's have Dr. Karma come in now, okay. and uh, we will discuss, we'll just talk to her for a few minutes about right. it, and then we'll talk to you both together. Very so good. thanks, Bonnie. Sure. Well, welcome, Betty. Hi, Betty. Hello. Great to have you on Thank the show. You. Thank you for Wonderful. having me. Thank you for having me. 
Have a Come seat. We have heard yeah. so much about you over the years from people that we know and we have. and about your Today. wonderful book. I want to make sure we get it out, looked at right now so that we don't forget, Grieving the Death of a Pet. And wonderful that you've done this book and uh, great for people. And I know it's been out for a while. and. And for how many years has it been out? It's um, been out about 10 years. Yeah. yeah, and when you first did it, there wasn't much on it, right? There, you're right. At that time, there was certainly fewer resources than there are now. In the last 10 years, one of the really good things now is that pet loss, as you know, is being recognized now. Mm -hmm. And there are more resources, yes. there's more literature, there's more research. Mm -hmm. People are talking about it more. There are more counselors. There are more online support groups. So my book, I hope, has made a big contribution in that area. That's awesome. Well, tell mm -hmm. us what you've got there that yeah. you brought in with you. Well, this is um, an example of a ritual or memorial that mm. people can make for their pets. There's so many different, um, Bonnie talked about her garden, but there's so many different kind of rituals and memorials. Mm -hmm. And rituals and memorials are a way to honor yes. and to say thank you and to remember mm -hmm. one's animal companion. And this was an example of a workshop I went to. It's, it's called a spirit boat. And Jennifer Ewing, she came up with this idea. And it's a way to build something as a way to move into hope. And mm -hmm. I know that that's, yeah, yeah. That that's what your whole mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, program and your all um, service is about. Just as an example of a way to move through grief to honor, as I say. And um, memorials and rituals can be very personal. They can be very private. Mm -hmm. They can be very celebratory. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, I've come to really see the significance and the value of rituals and memorials. I love that. You could put I all sorts too. of things from your uh, animal in that. And you I see they've got names could. on them. Yeah, that is so this neat. Was, I actually created this one. Wow. And this was Rocky, my first dog, oh. and then Rosie, my current dog. Mm. Yeah. So it was very meaningful to me to be able to participate in this That's workshop. Fun. And healing, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very. It's wonderful. Well, talk a little bit, I know, about. Um, Continuing connections. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, this. Um, we could put that right here. Oh great, would thank like you. To. I'll put it there. Thanks. Go ahead. This is some research that I've been involved with, this, um, as you were talking about earlier, and what we're looking at is the role that continuing bonds mm -hmm. or continuing connections play in people's grief, mm. and what uh, the literature said that this certainly happens with human loss. So. Yeah. What we wanted to do was to explore this in relation to pet loss. So what we have found, and we found this through 33 interviews that we did, was that the majority of the people that we interviewed do describe continuing bonds or this continuing connection. And they're able to continue mm -hmm. these ongoing relationships with their pets in these very meaningful ways, things like reminiscing, fond memories, mm -hmm. looking at photographs, having dreams about pets, thinking about being reunited, um, lessons learned. What did mm -hmm. they learn from, from being with their pet? One of the things we found that among our participants that a large number, probably 70% or so, talked about lessons that they had learned from sharing their life with an animal mm -hmm. and going through the loss. And for most of them, it was comforting mm -hmm. because that's one of the things we found about connect, continuing bonds is those people for whom they're comforting, mm -hmm. they have fewer intense grief symptoms and there's the opportunity for personal growth. Wow, yeah. this is really interesting, Heidi, because I never hear personal this about growth. pets. Right. All these things yeah. uh, come in yeah. from the human aspect, but we tend to really, society does minimize it. Well, well Very in, in the past, you know, we thought that it was, it was healthy to sever bonds, and now we're realizing it's important right. to continue bonds and, and at the same time reinvest in new relationships. Yes, mm -hmm. to continue yeah. the connection, mm -hmm. and people do have those continuing meaningful relationships yep. based on memory, on meaning, on gratitude. Mm -hmm. And people also look at what their pets have taught them about 
living up to the pet's ideals, mm -hmm. what the pet would want them to do. Mm -hmm. And like lessons that. about courage and inspiration. When people see their animals going through a really hard illness mm -hmm. and they see the courage of their animals, they're inspired and they mm -hmm. learn lessons. Mm -hmm. And talk about uh, rituals and memorials. I know uh, Bonnie has a garden that she does. And what about you, other rituals and memorials? Oh, there's so many ways people can do this. Um, this, this spirit boat is an example, but memorial cards um, where people send out an announcement of the pet's death with some words, tributes, a photograph of the pet. Mm -hmm. People create altars in the home where they'll put the photograph of their pet and maybe the box of, of ashes. Um, people plant trees, people plant bushes, people make donations to organizations mm -hmm. in honor of, of pets. There's so many different ways that people can do it. I think the important thing, though, is to help people come up with a way that has meaning for them mm -hmm. and, honors and that their honors own. their relationship yeah, with nice. their pet. And how about resources available? You talked a little mm -hmm. bit about that earlier, that there are a lot more resources oh, yes. available. In the past 30 years, um, it has all kinds of resources, individual counselors, mm -hmm. pet loss counselors, pet loss support groups. And there are online things too going online on. Online right? support groups. There are hotlines that people can call into. There are numerous um, online places where people can make um, tributes to their animals on TV, I mean, on the internet. It's really remarkable, the difference in the last 25 to 30 years. Why, why do you think that is? Because I think people are recognizing the importance of animals like Brittany in our okay. lives and the significance of the loss. Yeah, and I just I just read a study, and you've probably seen it, talking about how dogs really decrease our stress and having them in our lives, and having animals in our lives decreases anxiety and stress. <sighs> yeah, that, that's absolutely right. And to lose that um, stabilizing force, that mm -hmm. constancy, that continuity. Mm -hmm. um, Bonnie was talking about um, how how intuitive animals are, they take care of us. Mm -hmm. I know we, we found this in our research that people talk about that they take care of their animals, but their animals also take care of them. So I think this is being recognized more. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. being acknowledged more. Schools are allowing students to do things like dissertations now, doctoral work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that that really wasn't encouraged 30 wasn't years happened. ago. So there's a recognition, I think, in academic settings mm -hmm. about. All right, now my friend, his dog got killed. And uh, of course, other people who don't know a lot about animals might say, well, why don't you just get another one right mm -hmm. away? What, what's the, for both of you? Let me ask you, when should she get another dog? Would you like to? Sure, I'll start. Uh, the answer is there's no one right answer. Mm. I think there's a, a, a whole range and the continuum is from people who really can't tolerate the level of the grief and they may, they may actually get a pet before their ill dog dies. In this case, the dog has already died. They, your friend may choose to get a dog quickly. Mm -hmm. There's not a right or wrong at all. Other people, like myself, I swore never to get another dog. The pain was so unbearable mm -hmm. and I waited a good year. And, and I, you got a rescue dog. Talk about I that a did. little bit. I did. Uh, it was so hard not having an animal. I missed the visceral touching and the mm -hmm. smelling and the relationship. So I started volunteering for Golden Retriever Rescue. Mm -hmm. And they needed, uh, they needed volunteers for fostering. <laughs> and uh, it was my husband who said, there's no way you can foster a dog. <laughs> Any dog that walks in this house <laughs> is not going to be leaving. And uh, this dog walked in, Brittany walked in, and she never left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how, how about you, Betty? Do you have a dog now? Oh, I do, yes. I have a little dog. She, her name is Rosie. She's probably about 13. And I would absolutely agree with everything Bonnie said. What I try to ask people to do is to honor their timelines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't let themselves get pressured by other people mm -hmm. wanting them to get another animal 
because they're uncomfortable with the person's grief, mm -hmm. but to honor their timelines and do what's right for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, my friend did get another dog, and she got they got a puppy for the kids after uh, Christmas time, and they got the same type of dog. And what she said to me was, "I am so surprised what a different personality yeah. this dog mm -hmm. has. Mm -hmm. I've heard totally that too. Totally different. And, and I've also yeah. heard people say, "I'm getting another dog to replace the dog that died." And when they get it, they go, "Wait a minute, this isn't yeah. the same as the other dog. We really can't replace the other dog completely because this is a different dog." Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can't replace animals right. at all. Exactly. We develop a new relationship yep. with a mm -hmm. pet. Mm -hmm. And yeah. some people are really bonded with the breed, like we were, so we got the same. Uh, I would give some caution to parents if they have young children and they get the same breed. It mm -hmm. could be a little confusing for the child mm -hmm. uh, with, who might have expectations that the pet will be so similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in fact, as you said, with personality styles being so different, mm -hmm. they're never going to be the same. It's, a, it's interesting that you should say that because I think that the woman I'm talking about was so bonded with the other dog she didn't yeah. know it and she's a little disappointed yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. in this new dog. Yes. Yes. You know, she says it's not as... Um, it's a little shy and scared, and the other one wasn't. You yeah, know, and she's attributing that. all these uh, It's hard qualities. not to have that comparing mm -hmm. mind right. yeah. because they're so similar. Yeah. The other thing I saw was I worked for with a family that lost their firefighter father in the World Trade Center, mm. and the dog was the father's dog. Mm. And so they still had the connection. Mm. The dog was still alive after the dad mm -hmm. died, but when the dog died five years later, mm -hmm. it was devastating. Yes. Because this was the connection. The almost, last connection. Yes, almost. the last mm. connection that they had yeah. to mm -hmm. their deceased father. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm sure you've seen those kind of See things also, right? Yes. And that's especially true, the example you give, but I was thinking especially for those people who are elderly. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes when you think about all the losses in all the transitions in a senior's life. And that dog may have been that last connection mm -hmm. to a spouse, to a house, to yep. a partner, to... Or maybe even to wanting, feeling like you had the energy mm -hmm. to take care of another yes. animal. Because I remember when my yes. aunt's cat died, mm. she just didn't feel that she had the energy and the health, That's she was right. older, to you know bring in another mm -hmm. pet. So it yeah. was really kind of an ending for her in, in many ways. So yes. it can be especially challenging, I think, for, for seniors, but certainly the point you brought up, Heidi, about that connection, mm -hmm. that link to right. someone else. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pets often remind us of uh, unreconciled other losses, and the, the, mm -hmm. the your story just reminded me that would mm -hmm. be a good example. Not that they had uh, not continued grieving for the, fire, uh, for the father, but the surge of intense grief may yes. have been, it, it can bring back mm -hmm. unreconciled, resolved griefs. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point, Bonnie, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. what happened. Yeah. Yeah. They grieved yeah. the dog's loss, then they went back and revisited their father's yes. loss. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I want to thank you both for being on the show today and thank for you. all the wonderful pleasure. work thank that you're doing. You. And you really enlightened me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, tremendously. This is such an thank important you. topic. It and is. And like I said, one that can be minimized. And also, yes. I'm going to think now, Heidi, about what area I feel people's grief and how close they were attached and try mm -hmm. to be a little more sensitive yeah. to the people who, you know, have those kind of losses that, mm -hmm. are, that are more meaningful to them. So, mm -hmm. again, I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you yes, for thank having you. us. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having the topic. And yes, thank, thank you, you for being for on the show. Brittany. Thank you, Brittany. You did a great <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to hear some music when we go out of our show. And we want to thank everybody for listening to the show, watching the show today. We're going to see, uh, hear music by Peter Anderson and Randy Cookson. And Peter's going to sing. And they're going to sing Turn Me Inside Out. And the, uh, I'm sure they want to dedicate this to Jan Crutchfield because she wrote it. And she passed away recently. So uh, mm. thank you very much for being on the show. And, and thanks, everyone, for watching. Yeah, thank you. This is definitely out for Jan Crutchfield, who died just recently. Mm. He was in his 70s. So. But it was a different uh, application than the song was originally intended for. In a way, I'm glad it's over.
Gonna hurt me once you're gone. 